Hey, welcome back to the Big Red Zone. We are very excited for today's show. Remember, new episodes come out every Wednesday. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the like button on this video as well as all our other videos. You can also find us on Instagram and Twitter at Big Red Zone as well as TikTok at Big Red Zone. And tell a friend. This week, we got a crazy week in the NFL. Week nine, it was a bunch of upsets. I don't even know where the NFL stands right now. Uh, we'll also jump into our normal waiver pickup and pickups of the week. Do our way too early awards mid-season edition for the NFL season and talk about the Celtics really tough start. All that and more on this week's episode of the Big Red Zone. Welcome to the podcast. This is the Big Red Zone. I'm your host, Big Red. As always, I'm joined by Danny Football. Crazy week this week, Big Red. Crazy week 101, Danny Football. 101. The, Big the 101. Count to a, the chase to 200 is back on. Chase to 200. Uh, how was your week, Danny Football? Danny Live, you were telling me a little bit about yeah, it. Yeah, low-key. Action-packed week. L- well, low-key oh, week last week. Up. But uh, going into this one, we got Bruins tomorrow, which is Tuesday. So I'll already have been gone through it by the time this comes out. But it's... Bruins Tuesday, back to Lowell on Friday for their UML game, first time in two years, and then a Spartan race at Fenway on Sunday. So action packed, booked, completely booked. Unbelievable! So it's Danny football is getting back out there. He's about to cheer on our Bruins. Big hockey week, huge for, hockey uh, week for the our friend Danny football. Uh, I, I had a little bit of a fun uh, – I tried something new, Danny Football, this weekend. I tried Ooh. something new. I, I tried a new ultimate, sport. Ultimate Frisbee? Uh, disc golf. Close. Disc, disc golf. golf. Okay. Uh, it was definitely a, uh, to our disc golf fans that are listening. Um, I mean, all power to you because you probably are way better than I am. Has, um, uh, has Paige t- talked to you about that weird sport yet, or is it just me? N- no. I don't know what you're talking about. Let me see if I can find it. You can keep talking about what you're talking about, but so, I didn't know if she had mentioned it to you or not. So uh, the wife and I went with a couple of her friends and we went to Borderlands State Park and uh, went for a uh, little, uh, like a quick round of uh, disc golf. Uh, it's in the middle of the woods and you get a bunch of different Frisbees. They go a different certain distance. They got your driver, you get your putter, you get a midway whatever they call it. And uh, it's like golf. You try to get in the big, uh, the, the metal round can, I guess it's not really a can, but it's like a cage and uh, not bad for my first time. I may say, if I do say so myself, I was pretty good. Not bad for my, I should say I was pretty good. I was not bad for my first time, uh, but definitely something that I think a uh, company outing, I think that would be a, a good company outing for us. I uh, I love Ultimate Frisbee, so I definitely give it a shot. Um, when I did play Ultimate Frisbee, though, uh, I was the guy that would be able to run fast, catch it, and it w- would immediately hand the Frisbee off because I'm not great at throwing it. But, you know, maybe that maybe that's how I learned how to throw it. Uh, definitely uh, throwing is a big part of uh, disc, disc golf. Right. Uh, it's that uh, it's. It's, uh, I wasn't great at that element of it. There was some parts of it. Uh, I, you know, there's different ways to throw it. Uh, the guy that we, that did it the most that we went with was trying to explain it. And I got to a point, I was like, all right, I'm just going to ho- throw it and hope <laughs> for the best guy. Uh, but not bad. I didn't lose a Frisbee. There we go. And all my Frisbees, uh, won a couple holes. I, I have to say, I did think I won a couple holes. It just takes, it's like golf. It takes a long time. Like they, like it takes, like we, we didn't even do a full 18. We did probably 13, 14, and then I had to go. I had work. But um it took a couple hours to get through 13. You know, three or four hours probably to get through 18. So Jeez, uh, that's, that's an afternoon and a half. But you know what? It's a fun time. I think we should do it. Company outing. We'll get a, maybe get a couple of the Big Red Zone family to come. We'll get a foursome and uh, head on out. The I think uh, the Great game, idea. the game page was talking about was pickleball. Pickleball. It's like Love a pickleball. mini game of tennis. I've never played it, so I don't know exactly, but it's pretty popular. More popular with old people. There's leagues now and places that do it. Uh, older folks page. We don't uh, have to just say old people. I don't know what pickleball is. 
I didn't know if she had mentioned it to you or not, but pickle pickleball is like with uh like a wooden paddle and like plastic ball, and it's played like on part of a tennis court. It's like the same thing. You got to play it off a of bounce. Pickleball is becoming huge. That's a, that, that's <laughs> that's a pretty good game. It it is like and it is God amongst damn it. older people tend to play it, and uh, but I think the young crowd is starting to get into it. So, uh, pickleball would be a great game to play too. Paige is a big tennis player. I don't know if you know that. She oh, likes. She me, likes the. That. She likes the game of tennis. Trust she keeps me, trying to play me, and uh, we need to get this set up, Paige. Mm. I know you, content. O- Paige. I know you only listened to the last five minutes of the podcast. Yeah, we'll, but we'll, throw, that in. we'll throw it in at the end. We'll throw it in yeah, at we'll, the end. We'll tell Paige to uh, catch back up. We'll we'll also say it's in the middle too, so she has to listen to the whole episode. Uh but fun week. Dave football's got a fun week ahead. I can't wait to hear about the uh, UMass Lowell game and the Bruins game. But let's get into this weekend uh, in the NFL. This is Weekend Recap. It's the Weekend Recap. Okay, Weekend Recap. Uh, Pick three games in the NFL week. And boy, do we got some doozies. There was some blowouts, uh, um, some upsets. And I guess this one was a little bit of a blowout. We got the Broncos versus the Cowboys, which was seen as the Cowboys' easy win. Uh, but that was absolutely not the case. The Broncos dominated this game. I know it on the scoreboard, uh, it may look better than it was, but let me tell you, it wasn't even close. Um, the Broncos absolutely, they got uh, the Cowboys got some garbage time points, but uh, Broncos absolutely dominated. What is your general reaction after this game, Danny Football? Because I'm speechless. Yeah, what should have been the biggest upset of the day, uh, it got outdone by the game we're going to talk about next, but what should have yeah. been the biggest upset of the game was easily this Broncos-Cowboys game. I couldn't believe it. Uh, it was going on at the same time as the Pats game, so I wasn't watching it, but I was, you know, scoreboard watching. Mm-hmm. And, you know, slowly but surely, Broncos jump out, I think it was 16 to nothing at half, and they just yep. kept the pedal down. I couldn't believe it. So I didn't get to watch a ton of it. All I know is it was – from what you were saying, it was bell to bell Broncos garbage time for the Cowboys. Um, friend of the pod, Teddy Bridgewater balled out. He's finally getting a shot. So I, I, we have it here. Are the Cowboys still seen as a contender? This doesn't do a great, you know, this doesn't help their resume. Uh, it could, could it just be a down week? Absolutely. And we'll talk about the rest of the slate. Um, yeah, this was this was a very surprising game. I didn't expect the Cowboys to get manhandled like this. Uh, and, and you know, yeah, I completely agree. The Broncos' running game was quite impressive. Uh, they ran for almost two hundred yards, if I have that correctly. Almost two hundred yards. Uh, Javante Williams, rookie, had one hundred eleven yards on seventeen carries, and Melvin Gordon had eighty with a touchdown on twenty-one carries. Um, it was it was quite impressive, and I mean, the, I think that's the key to this Broncos team to have any success. I, I mean, they could be like one of those teams. I think the Broncos are going to be one of those teams that could be, you know, at the end of the season when they say in the hunt I, on the on the NFL graphic. I think this is going to be one of those in the hunt teams because, I mean, if they can run the ball effectively, that opens up Teddy Bridgewater to make passes like. You know, he hit, he has some weapons out there. He was able to hit Tim Patrick with a bomb. Uh, They got Jerry Judy back, Cortland Sutton's, you know, obviously a stud. And, you know, the defense can hold out like they did. I think that's a good sign. And I, but I beat, I think they beat this team with the rushing game. And uh, the Cowboys defense that was looked at as one of the best defenses in the league is starting to show some holes. Uh, The last two weeks have not been particularly good. Uh, they were able to win two weeks ago, but they weren't able to win this week. Uh, you know, it, it's it's tough, man. I, I think the Cowboys are still in it, but, I mean, this definitely sh- uh, shakes the confidence that the Dallas Cowboys are going to be like a contender team if they're losing to garbage. Like, Yeah, the it was kind of, the, kind of the theme of the week that, you know, upset cities, you had really kind of garbage teams grabbing wins over teams that we thought were going to be clear-cut contenders. Um. You know, it's one thing to lose to Tom Brady and the Bucks on opening night. It's another to get completely destroyed by Teddy Bridgewater and Melvin Gordon and all the guys you just mentioned. Um, I think the Cowboys will still be there, but yeah, it's not a great loss to take. It's it's pretty rough to take. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, looking looking ahead, the Cowboys I think can bounce back. They got the Falcons next week at home. I think that's an easy bounce back. But I mean, they got the Chiefs. Who knows who are going to show up with that game? The Raiders. Who knows who's going to show up? And the Saints, I mean, after the Falcons, you got three tough games in a row, and then you got a couple, uh, couple easy, a couple winnable games, and then you got a couple hard ones to end the season. So, um, you know, it's tough losing in a very competitive NFC game, uh, NFC race. Mm. It's tough to drop one like this, man. You have oh, to yeah, win. It's, a, it's win. a tough one to drop. Yeah, definitely a tough one to drop. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I still think this team is going to be there in the end, but it's going to be it's going to, this. Uh, like we said, it's crazy that this team won and moving on to the upset of the, probably the season. I think so this far, is our, so far, so far. I mean, this is, I mean, I think this will be the upset of the season. I, I don't see any other, this is just nuts. The Jacksonville Jaguars upset the Buffalo bills nine to six. I mean, what happened to Josh? Josh Allen throws two picks, 264 yards. The rushing game was non-existent. Josh Allen was the uh, leading rusher with 50 yards. And, I mean, Stephon Diggs got his. He got 85 yards with six catches, you know. But, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I mean, no touchdown scored in this game, all field goals. Uh, so, it was a defensive game. I, I mean, I'm speechless. After this win, I I really can't believe the Buffalo Bills because I I mean you had them being Super Bowl winners. I mean, content. Did they have them winning the Super Bowl? I think. Can't so. remember. I, I can't remember so. if you had them winning the Super Bowl, but I know you had them in it. A lot of people had them winning it or going into the Super Bowl winning the AFC. I mean, if you're dropping games to Jacksonville, I I and not only Jacksonville, they lost last week to the Dolphins. This is, they're on a three game losing streak. I mean, I I don't know. I don't see this team. I'm not really scared of this team anymore. To we be honest with you. We mentioned it last week how light of a schedule they had coming into this month. They came off the bye and it was, it was Dolphins, Jags. I can't remember the rest of it, but they have it a late schedule. Um, and we were talking about how the Patriots need to keep winning to keep pace and keep keep within the two games because we play them twice. So you, you can c- kind of control your own destiny there. Um, and it's any given Sunday, man. You know, you go in, you lose to the Dolphins, and all of a sudden. That's how the train kind of falls off the tracks. Now they go into Jacksonville. They can't score any touchdowns. It's a defensive battle. I was shocked. I thought they were going to roll over the Jags. They didn't. Um, Josh Allen on the Jaguars had a day with uh, interceptions, you know, fumble recovery, all sorts of – he was flying all over the place. And now, you know, you drop two games. You only have a half game up on the Patriots now, and that's only because you have a game in hand. So – I'm not going to say the Bills are dead in the water by any means, but, you know, if you're losing 9-6 to six to the Jags, they're not even able to put up a touchdown on the Jaguars. You're not looking as unbeatable as you once were, and now the division is – it's back to being a two-horse race. So we're the, – the Patriots control their own destiny at this point. Yeah, it's, it's – I mean, it's – oh, the wrong button. It's wide open. It, it literally is wide open and that's just not, it's not just in the uh, a- AFC East I'd say that's in the whole AFC. I mean, last week we sat here and we talked about how the Titans uh, who, you know, despite not having Derrick Henry looked pretty good. Uh, but we talked about how the tight, you know, the AFC was all wide open. The Raiders were the second best team. We said now after lose it, they lost a tough one last week. They got enough problems going on in that locker room between, you know, losing Gruden with all his controversy. Now the rugs problems that they're having, that locker room's a mess. I mean, you don't know what team you're going to get out of them. Uh, The Ravens, I think are on the top, on top. The Colts are another team that I, like I call in the hunt teams where, you know, you're going to hear about them at the end of the season where they could have a chance to make the playoffs of this, this, and this happens. Uh, but, it, I mean, it's wide open. I mean, we talked about the dumpster fire of the Jets. The Jets are 2-6. and six. They're in third place. I mean, it, I, it's, it's crazy to think that – I'm not saying the Jets are in it, in it but it's crazy to think, like, I, we're halfway through the season. 
And there's no one I'm thinking is like, there's no one guaranteed, I no, think, to be in the AFC no, Championship. There's no one that's head and shoulders above the rest. It's very much. It changes each it, week. It's very much. And there's definitely like the upper echelon of the AFC. And then there's the garbage teams like the Dolphins and the, you know, the Jets. Jets. Where you don't have to expect them to really make any noise, but. There are there is no Pat Mahomes Chiefs that are just above and beyond better. There are no the Bills now that we're seeing. Yeah. They're not above and beyond better. Um, the Raiders, who looked pretty hot, like you said, came you know have their own issues going on, and uh, by any means are not far and away better than anyone else. So if you look up and down the AFC, you mentioned it. There is no super team. There is no you know uncrowned king. So we're gonna see the second half of the season who really takes control and who, you know, if you want to make a run at the one seed, make a run at the one seed. So it's kind of buckle up time and see what we can get. I mean, now you're a half a game out. We're going to move on to the Patriots game right now, but looking at the Patriots, they're half a game out of first with the loss from the bills. The bills, I think, I believe played the jets next week. I believe. I, so. believe. I can check. So, I mean, I would say that's a guaranteed win, but who knows? I mean, I think the Bills are going to blow the doors off of them. They're so ticked off about what, losing three in a row. I think it's uh, it's yeah, kind of a lock. Uh, well, the Bills lost one two weeks ago. Am I wrong? Am I crazy that they lost two weeks ago? Uh, no, they won, they won two uh, weeks ago. Yeah, they beat the Dolphins last week. They lost the. I'm thinking of the Titans. They lost the Titans two weeks ago. Um, but you, we said it like when we were looking at the Patriots schedule a couple of weeks ago, we said the bills have this easy cream puff schedule. Um, Dolphins, Jags, Jets. I mean, they lose one of those. They help you out. So now, now you got to kind of capitalize and maybe I think the bills are going to be fine, but um, huge win for the Patriots. I, I like that. That was an unbelievable win for the Patriots. You had to win it. Uh, we're on a win, well, quite a winning streak. Road Warriors haven't lost away on the road. Uh, and I mean, I have it here. I mean, we said it. New City, same ghost. Sam Darnold, uh, the Patriots God just have this kid's it, number. Jesus Christ. This kid just can't play against the Patriots. If I was the if I was playing, had him on my team, I would just sit him the week they play the Patriots and just move on. It's just it, it was pretty bad. It was a pretty bad ga- ugly game. I couldn't believe how bad of the I mean, the Jamie Collins pick was just, that's a freakish, that's athletic, just a freak, that's a freak, freak play. athletic play, but you know, the pick six and the, uh, interception, um, after the pick six, I don't know what the hell he was thinking. It was Ghost. only, it was only outdone by Matthew Stafford's, uh, interception thrown against the Titans, but Sam Darnold looked terrible, man. He looked absolutely terrible. The Pats defense looked pretty good. All things considered, I mean, it's easy, you know, to say they look good because they got a couple of interceptions, but yeah. they were able to bounce back. You know, uh, Mac has the fumble. Uh, Mac has the lost fumble. They hold him to a field goal. Mac throws the, the uh, interception to Gilmore, hold him to a field goal. Pat's defense stood on its head all day long. I have to give him credit. Um, you know, the defense, we've been questioning, you know, which one's going to show up. Is it going to be the Bucks defense? You know, you're holding Tom Brady to no touchdowns, or is it going to be – you know, you're letting Mike White, you know, give it to you. So yeah. Um, hey, don't don't hate on Mike White. Mike White looks like a Mike White got hurt. Pro. So it now it's yeah. off. It's on to a XFL legend, um, Josh Johnson. I think that's his name. Yes. I can't remember, but uh, Mike White's old news at this point. But Pat's defense showed up. I gave to give him the Pat's defense credit. Uh, offense exclusively ran through the running backs. Stevenson and Bolden looked amazing. Um. Harris got the, me, Harris got the touchdown. He, he vultured a touchdown. I was just about yeah. to say he vultured a touchdown <laughs> off of Stevenson. Um, and then we have it here. Mac didn't look great, but he did just enough. So that's two weeks in a row where you know you don't necessarily need your rookie to go full Pat Mahomes, but just manage the game, my man. Don't make mistakes. And he was able to bounce back from that fumble and interception. So I got to give him credit. What do you do? You, uh, what do you make of the claims that he had that dirty uh, play on the, what's his name? Well, I just, I just saw the update that he thought Burns had the ball. So he, he said, I heard he, that. He, he said he was trying to just make a tackle. So I don't put any stock in it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, watching the play itself looks kind of bad, but I, I mean, in the, th- in the thick of it, after you just get lit up, 
I think you're just trying to hold on for dear life as you think you have the ball. I, I mean, can't I, imagine he was in too good of a mood either. He's probably like, this dude just ooh. fucking gave me my lunch money. Like, I'm gonna let me get mine. So I didn't get. I really, I really don't care. Yeah, I don't think it, I it's don't, not like he I, stepped on him or anything like that. Yeah, I don't think it was necessarily a really dirty play. I just think it was. Uh, and I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe inside Mac was like, I'm going to take out this guy's ankle, this son of a gun. But you know what? As far as I see, like, I didn't see any malice behind it. I thought it looked like just a football play. Like he, he, he was definitely holding on to his ankle, trying to get him to fall. But that, I mean, if he thinks he has the ball, then what do you want him to do? Just let go and let him run. No, I don't know. no. It just was a bad look. Cause he, cause he got lit up and you know, he was just holding on for dear life. Don't sack uh, Mac Jones if you don't want your ankle to get snatched. I'll just <laughs> say that. Uh, thoughts on uh, OBJ? He was released officially. I'll take him. I'll take him. I'll take him. Um, Where do you think realistically he goes? Because I don't know if he goes to the Patriots. I mean, as far he, as I've... He, I've seen contender. He wants to go to a contender. Right. Um, maybe... Maybe Green Bay, maybe Arizona, if they really want to bolster that offense. I know D-Hop was out this week. Um, I could see him maybe going Seattle, to Seattle. So I could see a couple of NFC teams making a run at him. I don't know. I, I can't. We mentioned it. There's no like above and beyond AFC team. So I don't know if he wants so, to stay in the AFC. See, that's why I would say he wants to go to the NFC, uh, AFC. Because I think the AFC teams are going to be saying, "Hey, you come here, where that puts us above the rest." And if you come here, you have a sh- you have a more direct shot to be in the AFC Championship and have a chance at a Super Bowl. I think it makes more sense for him to go AFC. Um, of course, the Patriots I think makes a lot of sense. I mean, you put him on the team. I think that that automatically elevates the offense. Uh, you know, drastically. I think he's a freak, and I think he would do some good things here, uh, especially as Mac start, they start letting Mac air out the ball. Like you give a 50, 50 ball to Odell. I, I have my money's on Odell coming down with it. Mm. Um, the other teams I think are more realistic that I could see him going are the chiefs and the Ravens. Um, you know, chiefs, chiefs, I can't imagine he goes to the chiefs. They already brought in Josh Gordon. That's going to be a full, full wide receiver room. I mean, but if you're talking Josh Gordon or Odell Beckham Jr., I think it's like, that's a no brainer. I mean, you put Odell on the outside with uh, Tyreek and Travis Kelsey. I mean, I think that's a wrap. I, I That's just like too good of an offensive. Like the way I look at it is it's, I mean, I get they brought in Josh Gordon, but if you they can cut Josh Odell, Gordon, if they want, he can come back here. I'm fine with that. I would love, I would love that. Uh, or the, I mean, you could put him on the uh, Ravens. I think the Ravens make a lot of sense. Put him with Marquise Brown. I think that that would, in the, I mean, the, rookie wide receiver i forget his name he would be like third option but uh that would make a lot of sense because that's like he needs wherever he goes he needs a place that is going to be very structured and have not take any of his crap and be a contender i think that's what has to happen and it's kind of like i put it in the same stock as like a b when antonio brown went to the um went to the bucks i mean he went to an organization that was a contender didn't deal with any of his crap. You know, he, it, it, it was and put him in an option where maybe he wasn't the top option on the team, but that allowed him to kind of get back into it and be able to flourish. And right now, Antonio Brown, even though he's hurt, I mean, this season, I mean, he's looked unbelievable, you know, in, in the times that we've seen him. So um, I think the, another sleeper team is the Titans. I think the Titans make a lot of sense. You know, they lose, uh, they just lost, um, Derrick Henry, you put him with AJ Brown and Julio Jones. I mean, those that's a quite the receiving core to have for that team. So uh, I don't know where he's going to go. It's a, it's a shock. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I think the Patriots should definitely be in that uh, mix, but we shall see. Um, let's move on to our next segment of the night. Let's move on to our picks of the week. For our picks of the week, we pick one game in the NFL season. Uh, what we think, uh, who we think is going to win. 
Uh, Diddy football's heater finally ran out last week with uh, the Green Bay Packers losing to the Yeah, all Chiefs. I needed was uh, Aaron Rodgers to completely lie about his goddamn <laughs> uh status, and that's what sunk me finally. Uh, but you know what? I'll take it. I'll take the break. I'll take the break to get it. I'm back in it, and my Patriots heater is still on. So uh, what's your pick of the week? I'm going Titans over Saints. Uh, I thought – Losing Derrick Henry was going to be a bigger problem. Evidently not. They ran over the Rams. So if they're going to turn into more of a, um, you know, passing attack slash running back by committee, I can't see why the Titans can't go up against the Saints who are having their own quarterback problems and take care of business. So I'm going to go with the Titans. I like it. I'm going to ride my heater. Keep riding it. Ride it till it dies. I'm going Pats over Browns. Right in the hot hand, Mac Jones uh, didn't look great, but I'm hoping he can lead this team. This defense looks hot. Uh, they're at home. Hopefully they get another home victory. It would be something if they sign Odell, because this would be the first game he could play and against his old team, and hopefully he puts up 100 yards and 10 catches. That would be something something else. But I'm riding uh, the Patriots train. I'm going Pat over Brown. Uh, let's go waiver pickup of the week. Uh for waiver pickup of the week, what do you got? I'm going the Arizona Cardinals defense because they're playing what? the Carolina Panthers. So if you want to bully uh, Sam Darnold again this week, uh, I suggest doing it because this dude is declining hard and he's declining fast. And the Arizona defense is fresh off of 12. So I'm going to go with the defense. That may be the first defense ever taken in the uh, waiver pickups of the week. We're about making history on Make the show. History here. Uh, I'm going to go with, I can't believe I'm saying it, a New York Jet. I'm going to go with Elijah Moore. Okay. He's rostered in, uh, he's rostered in a little bit. He's rostered in 15.3% of leagues. Um, he had a big night the other night. He had two touchdowns on uh, seven grabs, 84 yards. Uh this is uh, three weeks in a row. Since the bye, he's had more than 10 points in every game, including one against the Patriots. Um, he seems to be becoming a fam- uh, favorite target. He's gone up in targets every week since the bye uh, and has more catches every week since the bye and everything. All his stats keep improving. Uh, so I would, I think it's worth picking him up, putting him on your bench. I mean, they play Buffalo next, next week, so who knows what you're going to get, but after that, they go Miami, Houston, Philly. I mean, that's a pretty good three in a row down the stretch in a uh, in a playoff run. You need a flex play. I think Elijah Moore may be your guy in an extreme situation. All right. All right, let's move on. We're going to move on to our next segment. It's the way too early awards. So we already did this preseason right? Way too early awards. We did preseason way too early awards. We're doing this midway through the year. Okay. See how things change. This is our time to change it, Danny football. I think we maybe, maybe give it one more time. Um, but we'll remind you what we chose. And then if we're changing or we're going with a new, uh, or we're sticking with our pick. So day football, we'll go with coach of the year, coach of the year. Who are you going with? Who did you go with? And then who are you, cha- are you changing or staying the same? Coach of the year, I had Brian Flores. Uh, definitely changing that because he <laughs> might not even make it through the rest of the season. So um, I'm going to jump on the Bill Belichick bandwagon. He's done a lot with a lot less than he usually does. He has this team at five and four now. Um, rookie quarterback, defense, offense, kind of being thrown together due to injuries. I can't imagine that they – you know, f- fall off a cliff at this point. So I'm going to go with Bill. I I'm sticking. I went Bill preseason. I'm going Bill again. And it's for the same reasons. I mean, Bill is taking this team that was a non-playoff team last year, turning him into a potential playoff team right now. They're, they're right in the thick of it um, with a rookie quarterback. Uh, they did spend a lot of money on the, uh, this off season, but, you know, people were doubting this offense still. And I think he's turned this defense around. I think they're starting to get hot. They're looking at the Patriots of old and uh, let's let it ride with Bill Belichick. I think he deserves the coach of the year uh, this season. Uh, rookie uh, defensive player of the year. 
Uh, I play. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. All right. No, go ahead. I was just trying to find it. I did have TJ Watt, who I think is a potential. I think he's going to get hot as the year goes on. But as of right now, I'm changing. I'm going to go. Um, I'm going digs uh, corner for the Cowboys. Actually, I picked him to be a potential uh, defensive rookie of the year last year. So I was just a year off. Uh, I mean, he went on that tear of like, he has two touchdowns on the season. I think there's some wide receivers without one. So he has more touchdowns than some of our wide receivers on our team, more touchdowns than Jacoby Myers. I might add, um, everyone has more touchdowns than Jacoby Myers. Uh, and he has a bunch of, uh, picks. I think he has seven and he's leading the league with seven. Uh, I think he was the first player since, um, what's it? Woodson to have as many picks this early. I think so. I think they said he was um, the first, like when he had the seven picks, he was like the first player since Charles Woodson to have seven uh, that early uh, or that early in his career. I don't know. It was some, I saw that earlier. Uh, I forget the official stat, but uh, he's playing out of his mind. He's playing really well. He's a lockdown corner second year. Um, I like the person that you chose, but uh, I think he's definitely a candidate for uh, defensive player of the year. I went with Chase Young. Uh, it's not looking too hot. I feel like that Washington football team is definitely underperforming for what we thought they were going to have, especially fresh off that wild card game last year. Um, so I am going to switch. I'm going to go with Patriot Matthew Judon. He may have been the steal of the of the uh, free agency class, man, because this dude is all over the place. He got another sack last last uh, last afternoon against the uh, Panthers. Dra- dude, he dragged Sam Darnold down by his shirt. Like he just big manned him. He's been all, he's been, you know, every game, it seems like he's in the mix. He gets a sack. He gets, a, you know, forced fumbles all over the place. So I'm going to go Matthew Jude on the dude's been a beast all, all uh, season long so far. He was one of the three people I was choosing between. Uh, I was Diggs, Jude on, and one other player. I forget who, who it was, but we'll be renamed, be named, won't be named. What's, what do they say? Be remain nameless, I guess that's what they say. But Jude on was definitely a, uh, a pick because he's just been so I think he's the glue of that defense, man. He's easily the best player on the defense. Easily the best player of the defense. Uh in according to Danny Football, the best player, defensive player in the league. Uh and I think you may be on to something. I'm go uh, let's go rookie of the year. I had Trevor Lawrence and I'm changing it. I'm going Mac Jones. Call me a homer all you want. Mac Jones is the best quarterback in the draft from the draft class. Um I know Najee Harris and uh, Jamar Chase are going to get some looks, but I mean, it's a quarterback league people. It usually goes to the quarterback. So I, I think it's going to be, I mean, last week, year, I know Justin Jefferson got it. Um, and who knows, they may continue that run of LSU wide receivers getting it. Uh, but I think Mac Jones uh, deserves it. 15 pick in the draft overperforming this early in his career. I'm going with Mac Jones. Uh, I had Justin Fields. That's not looking great either. <laughs> so I'm going to go with Mac as well. Um, like you said, Chase is having an outstanding season. You know, they you're kind of right that they do try to tend to lean to the quarterbacks. But at the same time, Saquon won it over Baker. And then, you know, Jefferson took it last year. So I can't, I can definitely see Chase taking it. I think it'll just come down to whoever, you know, whoever looks better coming at, at the end of the season. I don't think it's determined just yet, but if you're asking me right now, I think Max had the more impressive season, all things considered, you know, considering the weapons he has around him, the uh, situation he was put into, whereas Jamar Chase literally is walking onto the team, walking onto the Cincinnati Bengals with his college quarterback and, a, you know, a couple other options that he's not getting, you know, double teamed every time. So right now, halfway through the season, I think it's Mac. Could that change? Absolutely. I mean, Jamar Chase could absolutely explode, have the greatest, you know, rookie wide receiver season of all time, and he absolutely absolutely would deserve the Roy. But um, right now I see Mac leading this team to a, at least the wild card right now, and I think that'll give him the edge. Najee Harris, too. You can't forget about Najee Harris because he's having a heck of a year in uh, Pittsburgh. I think, I think you're right. I think it's going to come down to, I think, what will determine this. Who helps their team getting to the playoffs? I think that's what's going to be the ter- determining factor. If Mac Jones is able to lead his team to the playoffs, 
then I think it's Mac. If Jamar Chase is able to have put together some of these big games like we've seen in the last few weeks, because you're right, he started off. He started the first game was pretty good, but then it, like I I don't think it was like as dominant as the last few weeks have been. Um, not last week, but the last few weeks before that. Uh, I think it's going to be depending on who leads their team to the playoffs. And as far as I'm concerned, I think Mac Jones is in the bet- key role to be a uh, be in that driver's seat to bring your team to the playoffs. So for the moneymaker uh, award MVP, I went Matthew Stafford as the, my pick for the MVP. And while he didn't show it last night, it was a pretty brutal game last night. That was a, that was a hard hit to the resume last night, but I'm sticking with it. I'm going to ride, ride it out. I'm going Matt Stafford still. Your pick, I think, has a real shot to be the MVP. But Matt Stafford, I think, has a real shot to close out this uh, close out the season on top. Look, he, he you're gonna have some stinkers in there mixed in there too. Uh, but for all those that are giving up on the Rams uh, and Matt Stafford, I think it's it's silly. Uh, he's gonna play Green. Uh, who's he got? He's got the 49ers, who I think will be okay. Uh, he's got the Packers. You know, that's a close one, depending on Aaron Rodgers. Jags, he'll probably put up about a million points. Uh, the Seahawks defense will put up a million points. The Vikings, I think he'll, he has a chance to go off. Um, so, I mean, he's got he's not the easiest schedule, but he's, he's not the hardest schedule in the end of the world to, at the end of the day either. So I think, I think Matt Stafford is in a good position to win it. He's got a lot of weapons on that team, and – uh, I'm rooting for the guy because for a guy that's struggled for years, sticking, staying loyal to his team, and just having a stinker of a franchise, being stuck to that team, uh, I'm just happy that he has a chance to flourish. And while he didn't show it last night, I think he's going to be the MVP uh, at the end of the season. Uh, my preseason pick was Derrick Henry. It was looking really good up until he hurt himself, so that's kind of out the window too. Um, so I'm going with TV12. I think you know. League leader in passing yards. He's setting the records now. He's starting to eclipse all these huge records. The Bucks are going to be there at the end of the season. And I think the fact that he's still doing this at such a, not an old age, but such an advanced age for NFL terms, that I can see him getting the nod over anyone that might be somewhat close. So I think if Tom keeps at this kind of pace, I can't. I can't imagine where they wouldn't give it to him. I I agree to an extent. I think Tom Brady, if I wasn't going to pick Matt Stafford, I think Tom Brady is a very uh, likely choice to be the MVP for all the reasons you said. And he's also, you know, he's setting milestone career records, but he's also like, you know, he's putting up great numbers this year. So, uh, yeah, I think TB12 has a real shot. I mean, it's going to come down to who finishes stronger. And uh, for my fantasy football team's sake, I hope you're right with Tom Brady because I, <laughs> I need him to have a great end of the year. Uh, all right, so we'll see how we do. I mean, I, I stayed strong on two of them, two out of the four. You went complete clean sweep. Yeah, I'm considering what I picked, I had to completely change it. Yeah. I, I, I But... Going into the preseason, I liked a lot of your. I liked the Chase Young pick a lot. Derrick Henry was looking really good until he hurt his foot. Mm. But all right, we'll have to see how we do. We'll check back in in what nine weeks, eight weeks, and yep. see how see how we do. Uh, let's move on. I mean, this is just. I mean, I I don't know. Every time we talk about this team, I just get so worked up and irritated. The Boston Celtics started their season. We've put this off for a couple weeks. I think just for our own sanity's sake. Uh, they're four and six with probably, I don't know, all of their losses, but uh, almost all six were bad losses. Uh, Ime is still dealing with the same problems that Brad had. JT isn't looking good. The chemistry isn't there. Smart's looking a little too... Uh, I put in there big for his britches. He seems like he thinks he's like he got promoted with Brad to be the GM. Uh, and 
I mean, it's not a simple answer, but what do you think is the answer? What do you think? Is it just too early to tell, or do we need to start making some serious changes to this team to be successful? I think it's too early to tell. Um, we, we've already lost Jalen Brown for one to two weeks with a hamstring strain. So now in almost a yearly tradition, the Celtics are going to be beginning the season with at less than full strength because that's just how it goes. What whether else is new? Whether it's someone, whether it's Tatum getting COVID last year or, or Brown straining his hamstring this year. So we're already starting behind the eight ball as far as I'm concerned. Horrible losses so far. We've dropped a nasty one to the Raptors. We blew one against the Bulls. And, you know, Luka Doncic puts one in our straight up our ass on um, Saturday night. So we got to love that. This team is struggling, man. You mentioned Smart. I don't hate Smart getting on Tatum. But at the same time, like, you can't say that. And then with the game on the line against the Mavericks, use the foul to give to just give the Mavericks a free last shot of the game. So I don't, as much as I love smart trying to be the leader, you can't pull that card and then immediately make a huge mental error in the next game. So th- this team is definitely struggling. They're not in a great place. The chemistry, like you said, doesn't appear to be there. Like when it's good, it's good. And when it's bad, it's bad. And I can't, put my finger on a central issue right now, 10 games in. Is it so much that they don't have Jalen Brown? Well, they had Jalen Brown for a couple games at the beginning. Losing him obviously doesn't help, but they did have a couple games where both Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown were there and they were still struggling. So is it coaching? Is it personnel? Is it just, you know, the couple bounces here and there? I couldn't tell you right now. All I do know is that through 10 games, this team – isn't instilling any sort of confidence in me that they can make any sort of run. Um, it is still early. That could absolutely change. As far as I'm concerned, you ride it out. You have to see what this team can do without Jalen Brown, without whoever it is next. Cause you got God knows someone else is going to go down as soon as Jalen Brown comes back. So I look at it now that it, this is just a team treading water. And if they pull themselves out of it, they pull themselves out of it. If they don't, then I can't imagine brad or wick or anyone in that front office is going to be pleased with how this turned out uh i i'm on the same fence as you on one way is it's too early to tell i mean we saw with the red sox we were writing the red sox off in september that this team was like you know they 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 just don't they're not going to make it and they're not going to do well they may make it to the wild card but that's going to be a quick quick exit and they ended up making the two games away from the alcs so it's still month one or two, not even a full month into the season. We're 10 games in. That's why you play, what do you play? 80 something of these games. Uh, but I think I know what the problem is. And I thought long and hard about this. Who do you think is the leader of this team? Player wise. It should be Tatum. But who, who do you think is the leader? Of I this think, team? I think Mark smart. And if you did it, I think Marcus Smart waves the flag. And if you had to pick another person on the floor who's like a leader, we always hear it out of even Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Who do you think is the next leader on the team? Is seen as a leader on the team? Al Horford. In any successful team, in any sport, your best player should be your leader, or one of your top two or three players should be the leader, not your fifth not your sixth. And that I think is the problem in the last couple of years, Marcus smart. And even going back to the teams with Al Horford. Now back in the beginning, when Al Horford was on the team, he was probably one of the best players, but not now your leaders have to be Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. And I think Jalen Brown has it. I don't think Jason Tatum has the ability to be a leader and that's okay. Like, I mean, it's not okay, but I think people are depending on this kid to be the leader. And I don't think he's got it in him. I don't, I don't think so. I don't and think that he is, has, I don't think he's interested in being the leader. I don't think Jason Tatum wants to be the quote unquote, Paul Pierce of this team. I think, I think he's the best player, you know, bar none, but I don't think he is interested in being the raw, raw guy or the, I'm going to, you know, 
pick you guys up kind of guy. I think he'll do it when he's on the court. When he's on the court, he's he's 100% the, I'm going to do what I can to win this game. But, but I know. don't think he's a leader on the court, to be honest with you. Like, I mean, I don't buy that he doesn't make players around him better because he's passing. The, it's not like he's not passing to him. In that game that Marcus Smart complained that he wasn't hitting people in the corners, he had a bunny to Marcus Smart. He just gave him a wide open three and he bricked it. Like, he is trying to pass. He is trying to get people involved. I just don't think he's a leader. I don't. I don't think he is. And it's a problem that Marcus Smart is your leader. That's my problem. And it's a problem that, while I love Al Horford, he can have veteran leadership qualities. But when the game's on the line, I mean, when you look at the Brooklyn Nets, Kevin Durant's the leader of that team. And if you want to say, I guess James Harden is the leader. When you look at the Warriors, Steph is the leader of that team. When you look at the Lakers with all their veteran leadership, LeBron James and I guess Anthony Davis is, but mainly LeBron is the leader of that team. I mean, you could go down the line. Their best player is usually their leader. Marcus Smart, the fact that he's the leader of this team is a problem. And I, looking at it the last few years, I mean, he's the leader. I mean, look at last year. I mean, it's not Jason Tatum. It's not Jalen. Jalen Brown was hurt. It's not Kemba. It's not uh, going back to Kyrie. Kyrie wasn't the leader. Like when we, I mean, maybe the first year or two, you were like, oh, he's the leader of the team. But I didn't really see him as that. Gordon Hayward wasn't seen as the leader. It's like, I think that there's something to be said when your fifth best player or sixth best player is the leader of your team. I mean, I just don't think you're going to be successful because that means your your top player isn't taking control of the game. Is maybe not taking control of the game, but not positively taking control of the game. I don't think I'm too far off on this. I I think it's, I think that's a problem, and I don't know how you fix it. I mean, the only other way is you bring someone in, but uh, I I I think that's a serious problem with this team is Jason Tatum. I don't see being a leader. And I also, I'm starting to get the vibe that he may not be here in the next five years. Um, I, I really don't know how to respond to that because if it can't be fixed and Jason Tatum's not going to be the leader, then you would need to find someone of his stature or better to be the leader. And I don't know if that's possible. So I don't know how this gets fixed. I don't know I, that, oh, I, I'm not saying it's going to be, I, I don't really have a, a solution for it. And I'm not saying to just trade. I'm not a trade Jason Tatum guy at all. Cause you kind of need him. as much as I love him. The answer to the question, may be trading Marcus smart, to be honest with you. And I hate to say, I really like Marcus smart, but when he's there, he's the leader of the team. And I think he's just more of a dog. Like, I feel like he's got a lot of dog in him. He's like, he's in a positive way, good way. Like he's got a lot of like heart. He's got a lot of grit. And he's like, if you want to take this spot, take it from me. And I don't think Jason Tatum really is a guy that's like, all right, I want to take it from you. I, I think he's like, all right, you can have it. I'll, I'll go out and score, take about 50 shots and score 30 a game. He's not even doing that. He's scoring 24. Jalen Brown was before he got hurt was averaging 30. Uh, I'm not a trade Jason Tatum guy. Believe me. But I think they need to figure the only way to do it is bring someone in that is going to be that guy. And I, I, I really don't know. I don't know. What do you think of the comparison? People are comparing Jason Tatum to Carmelo Anthony. Uh, it's not a terrible one. I mean, Carmelo Anthony's had a pretty good career. Yeah. Um, he's never been a number one guy, though. So if you're going by that logic, you would need to find someone who – is the clear cut number one? Um, in Mello, regards, you want to say Mello would be the number one guy? No, because he hasn't won a championship. Oh no, 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 no! I mean, like on his team, like I feel like he's the number one guy on a. I feel like he's been the number one guy uh, option on his team. I just think, right. yeah, so I, I don't think Tatum, he wins. Now that neither of them have won on anything, so they're right. They're, you can compare them in that sense, but if you're gonna say, hey, Jason Tatum's future his ceiling is Carmelo Anthony. If you tell me that right now, then you need to find someone who can be the number one. Cause if he, if you're telling me Jason Tatum's ceiling is Carmelo Anthony, we're not winning shit. Yeah. 
I, I agree. I, I think it's right. As of right now, I think that's a perfect comparison is, is young Carmelo. I mean, he's going to score you 25 to 30 points, uh, but he's not winning you a championship alone. So. Well, the problem uh, is that he has Jalen Brown and they're still not doing it. That's true. That's true. Uh, I don't know. I really don't. This team, I, I, I think the only thing that they can do right now is ride it out. And that's a scary thing to say. Uh, they got a email. I've really felt good about email coming in. I thought he's going to crack the whip, but it doesn't seem like it's working. It's the same problems as always. Uh, but again, it is early. The only positive thing is, is you got a lot more games left and maybe something figures itself out in the next like month or two, but they're still dealing with the same stuff that they're doing, dealing with right now. I would say one of the people that is on that trade block is Marcus Smart because as much as I love this guy and I want him to retire a Celtic, I really do. Like I like this, it pains me to think about it. I think you got to start thinking about trading him away because it's not. I don't think you're gonna choose Jay. I don't think you're gonna choose Marcus Smart over Jason Tatum, and I I, I don't know. I think it, I think it's I, I it's just it's a crappy situation because we thought this team would be a sneaky playoff team be like a five, four seed in the East. And right now they're looking at a uh, potential, you know, a uh, we're looking at the lottery right now. So it's, it's not a good time to be a Celtics fan. Nope. So uh, it's early. Let's move on. Let's uh, hopefully we can regroup and get, you know, maybe with Jalen out, maybe Jason can kind of get some legs under him and try to help lead this team to a couple of victories. Uh, let's move on to some MLB quick updates. We got uh, Braves. Thank goodness beat the Astros in the World Series. I think it. everyone was a Braves fan that night. Um, congratulations to them. Uh, and I'm so happy they were able to win that. I'm, I'm such a big Freddie Freeman guy. I'm happy. Yeah, you know he's loyal, loyal guy. Got the win. Got his World Series ring with his team, and uh, he totally deserved. Uh, also shout out to what was it Charlie Morton that pitched with a uh, broken yeah yeah uh, broken leg broken leg and still got the out give him a shout out happy he got a ring too that was tough as nails uh, to a little Red Sox news JD does not opt out he had three opt outs on his contract and didn't use one of them huge, so that's really huge. good uh, that's a big uh, big win for the so- uh, Sox. Uh, another big win is they pick up the option on Vasquez. So Vasquez will be here for another year. Big, big win for the Sox. Uh, another win. This is all wins for the Sox. Quick up to quick, uh, wins for the Sox. They extended a qualifying offer to Erod. I think it was 18 something million, 18.6, maybe million dollars. So he has, a, I think a week to accept that if he wants it or he'll become a free agent. So hopefully he accepts that. And we got Erod for another uh, season. That would be huge. And I think the biggest wins for the Sox is they declined the player option on Perez and Richards. Two huge see, wins. Two see huge you, wins. Garrett Richards, and see you, Martin Perez. Um, Martin Perez, who had – wasn't it last year? He was actually not bad. He was pedestrian, uh, but it was 2020, yeah, so. 2020. Uh, but thank goodness we got fr- rid of our friend Garrett Richards, a uh, friend of the pod. Uh, we talked about quite a bit in this Red Sox team. And an interesting one, Kyle from Waltham uh, becomes a free agent. And they, I mean, they're talking like he's still in talks with the Red Sox to come back. Uh, but this one I'm a little nervous on. I saved this one for last for the reason because I don't, it's very, it's a very unlikely situation. I see them bringing him back for them unless the money's right, because he kind of already gave the DH money to JD. I do not want him playing first base at all for this team. I'll take Bobby Dahl back all day. I do not want him playing first, and I I I just don't. I mean, if he plays in the outfield, I'm okay with it. But and then move Kike to second, like that's like I think the most logical thing you do. But do you spend the money on Kyle or do you try to go after a big free agent like um, Correa, like we were talking about? 
Yeah, so my uh, road my roadmap for keeping Schwarber would have been shift him to the outfield, doll back back at first, Kike to second, and then you kind of go that route. But like you mentioned, you could also go the route of a Carlos Correa and move him to second. You can also go to Trevor Story. Uh, so there are a couple options where you can fill in that second base position and also hang on to doll back and keep – you know, everyone kind of where they are, keep Kike out in the outfield where he did excel. He did a really good job. Yeah. Um, so it'll just really become a question of how do the Red Sox want to shuffle things around? Do they want to completely move the defense around to keep Kyle happy? Or do they want to just say, hey, you know, we'd, we'd rather just get a solid second baseman and fill in one hole rather than move everyone around. Because you also have Jaron Duran running around as an option right. for the outfield. Dahlbeck obviously, you know, ha- had a really good August and into September. Um, and then you also have Tristan Cassis in the pipeline. So you have a couple of options for the infield. And it becomes a question of, do we want to hold up everything with Kyle at first base? Do we want to hold up everything with, you know, Kyle moving to left field? We move Kike to second and then let Dahlbeck play first. So there are a lot of questions. So... I will say the the Red Sox are in a good position to lose him, but they're also in a really good position if they keep him. So it's it's not a matter of if he leaves, we're devastated. If he stays, he kind of handicaps the team. So I think we're in yeah. a good spot. Yeah, I think the answer as far as the first base position is Bobby Dahlbeck for now. Because you got Tristan Cassis right there at uh, AAA now in Worcester. AAA, yeah, yep. So, I mean, it's only a matter of time before he gets called up. And I think Bobby's the guy that kind of the gap guy. I think he's, he, you know, he got hot at the end of the year. He proved he can, you know, be a, he's, he's proved he can be a capable starting first baseman, both defensively and offensively. And I just don't see, I, I do not want Kyle Schwarber playing first base. I do no, like I, his. I don't think he is. I don't, and I don't think he'll have an interest in doing it either. I think no. If the Red Sox went to him and say, "Hey, we'll give you this year, this amount, this amount of years for this amount of money to play first, I wouldn't be shocked if he said, "Well, <laughs> this team is giving me this this amount of years of this amount of money to play left field or DH." So I don't yeah. think he's interested in first base. I do like him in left field, and then you move Kike to second, and you have is Renfro still a, on the on contract? I believe so, yeah. So then you have, uh, you know, either Verdugo in center and uh, Renfro in right or vice versa. Uh, I don't like, I don't mind that. And then you have Jaron Duran out there that you can kind of move him around. Um, I don't mind that at all. I, I actually really like that. And then you have Bobby at first and, you know, we'll see, see if uh, when Tristan Cassis is ready to go, but they need, they definitely need to add, some arm, some arms into this bullpen. I, that is their main problem. Their arms and their starting pitching need to be worked on. Starts with Erod. Get Erod in there. You had Nasty Nate. You had Erod, uh, Pavetta. You move him into a full time starting rotation. Tanner Hopefully, Houck. Tanner Houck is ready to go. And then you know maybe we find what's that two, three, four, five. We're right around five. Maybe find one more starter capable arm. Maybe like take a chance on like a Garrett Richards, but not Garrett Richards, like a veteran pitcher, starting pitcher that you kind of bring in here and see if you can make it work on like a one year deal or a one year with a option play, uh, team option. Um, just not Garrett Richards. <laughs> uh, but I mean, I think this team is set up. I mean, you're an ALCS team. You're two games away. I think there's you're only a few pieces away from being a championship team, and I think they can add that this year. Yeah, I think um, second base is huge. Like you said, filling out the bullpen, whether it's you know big, big price tag guys, or even just you know you can mix and match. We've done it before. 2018, the bullpen wasn't that great, but it was good enough to get us there. So hopefully, Matt Barnes finds himself. You bring in a couple pieces, like you said, maybe another rotation arm, but whether it's maybe like a array or I don't think Scherzer is going to be in our price range considering he loves the West coast teams. Um, and then even like a Justin Verlander, he's more towards the end of his career. Maybe he'll take a one year deal just to see what's going on, but not a huge amount of options for starting pitchers, but bullpen we've, we've seen teams be able to kind of throw bullpens together. So as long as I'm smart about it, 
you know, you get rid of Perez and Richards, you're clearly clearing out the ball pen. So let's see what we can kind of mesh together here and make another run. I mean, I'm looking at top free agents that are available I, uh, for arms wise. I mean, you have a chance. I, I don't know what Scherzer is going to do if he's going to just try to re up with the nationals. I mean, with the um, Dodgers and just try to run it back and see if they can go for, you know, a full year with them. I mean, I wouldn't mind them taking a stab at Mad Max as the bringing in like a bona fide stud starting pitcher. Uh, a guy that I think they, had, you know, he had a really good year last year and it's kind of older. Um, but he had, he's coming off a great year is Robbie Ray. I kind of would like them to take a stab at Robbie Ray and see if they can um, get him in there. Uh, but there's, it's a huge free agent class this year. Uh, I'm looking through it right now. And I mean, at the top, you know, you got Carl, the top, I'll name the top three. Carlos Correa, obviously, but you got Corey Seager, who's probably going to re, uh, resign with the Dodgers, I would, I would, can only assume. And then you got Chris Bryant, who was just traded. Who knows if he'll want to stay with the uh, uh, Giants? Uh, you got Scherzer. You got Trevor Story, like you mentioned. Uh, Marcus Semyon. That's another potential guy that the, you know, we could go try to steal from uh, our neighbors to the north or south. I don't know. It depends on where Toronto is going to move their team. Yeah. Um, Baez is a free agent. He was just traded. Freeman will stay. Uh, Kevin uh, Gossman, the right-handed pitcher from San Fran. I mean, he he. I don't know his story. Marcus Stroman. I want to mind like he probably won't want to get out of New York. I mean. That's someone that I wouldn't mind seeing. I mean, there's a lot of options out here. Your boy, Nick Castellanos, bring him in here. That's your guy. Uh, but, I mean, there's a lot of options out there. And I just hope that the um, – I hope the Red Sox at least try to sign one, if not two of these guys. Uh, on this on this thing I have right here, Kyle Schwarber is ranked the number 14 free uh, top free agent in the MLB this year. So, um I mean, who knows? I mean, he could that I'm fine with bringing him back, but they got it. They do got to add some arms uh, going forward on this team. They did. Uh, Clayton Kershaw did not receive a qualifying offer. So he's a free agent. Uh, whether or not that means they're not interested in him, I don't know. I don't think that's the case. But if Clayton Kershaw's on the move, take a stab at him. But free agency has begun. Uh, we kind of just talked about who we want. So. Uh, I'm, it's going to be interesting the next few weeks to see who the Red Sox start picking up and who I, Heim sees as leading this team because we're close, man. We need to add some guys going forward for next year. Um, Danny Football, I'm giving you your time. It's that time of the show. Revs, you must little update. You got let us hear it. So we got uh, the Revs lost yesterday, unfortunately, to uh, Miami, but they did clinch the Supporter Shield, best team in the regular season. Uh, first time in club history, most points in an MLS season. Uh, this team, honestly, is the far and away favorite to win it all. They got a first round bye. They play the winner of New York and I want to say Atlanta, but I can check on that. Um so all around huge successful um huge su- successful season for the Revs. Uh debuted a new logo that'll go into effect next season. They were the last remaining MLS team with their original logo from 96. So big things coming up for the Revs. All they need now is a new stadium and they'll be good to go. Um I think they're going to be able to bring home that MLS Cup, man. They're 0 and 4 in MLS Cups. I think this is the year. They're just too good. They have too much talent and they're it's just head and shoulders above the rest. So I really think the Revs are going to take this one home. Um, as for UMass Lowell, like I said earlier, I'll be there Friday. They take it on Northeastern. It'll be some Hockey East action. They got Boston College on Saturday. So this is where Hockey East turns up the heat. This is where, you know, we get to see what teams are above, what teams are below. And right now, UMass Lowell is ranked number nine in the country. So we got to hope that they step on the throat, get the Hockey East under control, and then we'll take care of the rest. Danny football's going home. He's going home to see his boys play. Uh, let's move on to our last segment of the night. Let's go to the people's topic. It's the people's topic, baby. People's topic.
people's topic you can write on our instagram and twitter page at big red zone give us a follow let us know what you want us to talk about in this segment to start off uh this one comes from maddie p he said how about the fact that ben Intendi won a gold glove yesterday uh he's that kind of stings yeah, I mean he's he's the least he's like he's the number one hater of Andrew Benintendi. He hates Andrew Benintendi. Um, I mean, yeah, it's 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 tough, but you know what? It's like I said when he got traded, um, it was his time to go. You know, whatever he does going forward, it it it, it is uh, good on him. I hope he succeeds. Uh, but it was his time to leave. Everyone was like done with the Andrew Benintendi time and. Uh, he can't look back on it. So good for him. And hopefully, you know, Hunter Renfro should have won one if you're looking at it. So, yeah, that's kind of, you know. I was very shocked he didn't get one. Let's move on to Vicky. The Bills effing blow it. They sure did. Goddamn. Yeah, we talked about it. The Bills blow. Vicky says the Bills blew it. So they sure did. Uh Oh, Ed, Pilot Ed. He's, and that's not safe, man. He sent a snap. Uh, he sent a picture with his comment and uh, of him flying a plane, man. I think you need to focus on flying the plane. This is absolutely ridiculous. This is, I feel like unsafe reading this thing. Um, he says opinion on Marcus smart drama within the team. Uh, you, you hit on that pretty good. Yeah. I think we covered that Ed, but I think what I would say is why don't we focus on flying that aircraft, buddy? I, I think <laughs> I think Marcus Smart drama can wait. I think we need to land that plane safely. Um, this comes in from Diddy Football's wife, Paige. Oh, geez. What uh, Paige says I have two. Oh, God. Uh, well, Paige, you only get one, so you better make it good. I'll read two. Uh, she says, I have to. Also, I felt exposed last podcast. I don't know what she meant by exposed. How did we expose Paige last podcast? I got to save know, this. I don't remember what we did oh. last week. That would have exposed I don't, her. I don't remember what we would have exposed her with. Paige, can you write in to say how I ex- <laughs> how we exposed you? I'll I, you, w- just read off her questions. I'll try to no. double back to see what we said. Uh... Her number one says, can we all go to a Bruins game? I've never been to one lame. Whoops. I know. Whoops. Whoops. Well, Whoops. your your hubby is going to a Bruins game tomorrow night, so Uh-oh. you missed Whoops. the opportunity. Uh, wow. Did you tell her what to write here? Because these are two Danny football type questions. Uh, she wrote, two, who is winning hockey East this season? It's UMass Lowell. It's UMass Lowell. It's not going to be Gotta UMass. Go UMass. UMass Gotta- sucks. So going to be UMass Lowell. UMass Lowell wins it all, and I i mean... If Danny anything, I good. think UMass is going to get kicked out of Hockey East, so... Do you have Paige on there? No. Is Paige I'm, live? I'm, no, I'm listening back to the podcast to see what we possibly said. Oh, I thought you called her up right but now. No, I, I think... exposed her. Should we call her up right now? I want to I wanna know what how we exposed her. I don't really know what's going on. I'll get her. Oh, there it is. She's ducking us. Yeah, she's ducking us. All right. She's I ducking what, us. I don't know what we possibly did. You know what, Paige? I but gave you a just, chance. She just lost her Bruins game privilege, so. Well, guess what? We gave you a chance to defend yourself. I don't know how we exposed you. I really, I'm really confused here. I'm, I'm caught off guard with this accusation. Um, she but, lost her Bruins privileges, and then she has the balls to even consider that UMass Lowell isn't going to win Hockey East. So just an all-around bad day for Paige. Uh, yeah, that was that was pretty ridiculous. I, I'm really thrown off here because I don't know. Uh, it's usually all positive things for Paige. I don't remember what we possibly said. Let me try calling her by the end of this. Um, this one, our last one comes on Instagram. Uh, no, I mean, we called him out last time. He didn't do this. I'm really disappointed. I look forward to this question every year. Joe Cecilia, where is your question? I, I mean, I, I gave you plenty of time to put this out there. Now we're just calling. Now, see, Joe Cecilia has a reason to expose us, but not Paige. Uh, all right, let's go to our last question. Timmy Boom Sauce, fan of the show, says, is Bill eating too many Big Macs? Oh, I think that's in... Uh, Damn. 
Jeepers Crow. That's Jeez, the coach the guy. of the year, you asshole. Fuck you. Jeez, I mean, the guy. I, God look at this. damn. Look he's at that what, picture. 70? Look at How that picture. Yeah, give the guy, give the guy a break, man. I mean, he's, I, I don't have the greatest body out here in the world. And we're not all like Danny football with the, just hand carved like that. Uh, Man, I, I don't know. I think. Oh my! That's that's a, that's a, brutal. That's a great, God that's damn! A, that's, a, that's a brutal one, man. What, what I don't do you know. want out of a man with six Super Bowl rings? God, he has I nothing mean, left to prove. Yeah, I that that's pretty. That's pretty. That was coming coming for the throat there, Timmy Boom Sauce. He's that's sixty-nine a, years old. What do you want the man to look like? Give him give him a break here. You know what? I think he's going for the comedy factor. You know, I can't can't hurt him for that. Uh, you know, I think. I, I think he he maybe has a couple of Big Macs. You know what? And you know what? When you win six Super Bowls, you deserve a Big Mac. So 100%. you know. All right, let's get Paige on here. All right, one more time to get Paige on because this, this is like, I'm right now. I'm thinking like I'm. It's like the View. I'm or Dateline. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think back. Like they got me cornered here. What I said. I I want to know what we said. Now she's ducking our calls. Oh, Paige is here. Wow. Paige, she you are answers live. Me. She doesn't answer me. Paige, you are live on the Big Red Zone. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Can you hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, hear. All right. I hear you. All right. You can't hear you can't hear Zach, but uh, but I will I'll translate for you. Um, I'm reading your question here, and I for one, and Dan Football is too. He went back and tried to listen to it. I am totally shocked to hear that we exposed you i do not know what you are talking about care to defend yourself here um all my thoughts on the last podcast what are you talking about this is the people's topic you wrote in this is about your thoughts yeah but you exposed all my other thoughts besides the question what are the what thoughts? thoughts what thoughts did we uh danny football wants to know what thoughts i i, I too what thoughts are you talking about yeah i don't really remember oh my oh god. my god. goodness Jesus gracious Christ. This is like for the last five minutes, we've been trying to figure out what we exposed. And we're like, we're just, we're thinking back. Like it's Dateline. We're trying to think about it. We thought we caught us in a lie. Like we're... I'm glad I gave you a mystery. The, what mystery? There was, there was, uh, the mystery has to be ended with like this big um, finish. There's nothing. Don't let her go anywhere. I have it. Hold on. What's the better mystery? Paige, I feel like you're just talking in riddles. I I don't know. I think. That... Well, well, I didn't I catch mean... her too off guard. I already tried to call her. <laughs> uh, Danny Fubo goes says I uh, didn't catch you too off guard. He tried to call you. <laughs> Are you ducking calls from the big red zone? No, I was on a walk with my dogs. Oh, it was a dog walk. Danny Fubo is listening to the last episode and he's very upset because he's trying to figure out how we exposed you. Oh, maybe that's what it was. Didn't you expose what she said? Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You did. I, yeah, I read. You did. I read. I read, I read text messages verbatim. She's right. That that's right. You know what? I'm glad we got to the bottom of this because I really thought that I was really confused about how we exposed you. And but you know what? I stand corrected. We did. Tell her did. she can start her own podcast and read text messages that we send. Yeah, I, I I think I I don't even remember what you said, but I I remembered. Uh, Oh, because you were mad about us leaving you out on something. You didn't get the invite. I think it was something like you didn't get. The, there was like no. no I, just, I said like, I think I said like, I don't know if I have anything. Wait, I have something. And then I read the question. And you just read all my inner thoughts. I don't know. Oh, is that it? I thought you were talking about a, a Zach read like a, like a text chain between I you. I did. He did? Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh no! I think that was like two years. Maybe that was two weeks ago. I don't know. I don't know. This is getting off the rails. I thought there was going to be. Right, big... Hang up the phone. Okay. Hang up the phone. All right, Paige is gone. I hung up before we got Danny football and any more hot water at home. Um, man, I, I now I don't. I really don't know no, what she's, she's talking no, about. No, she's 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 right. I just don't know what she's referring to. She might well, have the right. I think she has the right thing in mind, but. Regardless. I don't think she, I think she just meant I was reading her whole, like I was reading, I think at the end of that, oh, I got, like he, she I was just to read the entire text or the entire like, question. I just read what she sends me. I mean, oh, I did okay. that again. This, I did that oh, again. No, this I, 
I think last week she made it like set like a rambling thing. Well, thank you to everyone for writing in on uh, for our people's topic. You remember, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at Big Red Zone. You can also find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the like button on this video as well as on the other videos. And tell a friend. Uh, my thanks to Danny Football and surprise guest page, a call-in guest page. Uh, we'll see you next week. Have a great week, everyone.